you check out a new sponsor, The Health Blaze. All the information is in the description. Use the promo code above. Good filler one boxing at 18% off of all their natural products from deodorant, pomade, toothpaste, and much, much more. And they have additional discounts on their website as well. That's thehealthblaze.com. Start December 20th. All right, man. I'm back. Sorry for the air, man. Shit, your boy didn't have a long day, man. Chasing one of my daddy motherfucking dogs. Actually, Miles' daddy, you know. Chase him through the neighborhood, uh, this neighborhood. I'm out here in Inkster. Jillian Love, hometown. I got I got roots out here as well. But um, let's talk about Canelo Kovalev, right? And I would get on camera, but your boy's sweaty and threw out, man. But let's talk about Sergey Kovalev and Canelo. Allegedly, uh, when I just said alleged, is that uh, Kovalev was offered half what Danny Jacobs' guarantee was, 12-5. To fight Canelo for I think September 14th, I think it is. It's an article on boxing stuff going on Twitter saying that he was only offered eight figures. I'm like, really? I understand they probably saying, well, they doing some Eddie Hearn shit. Well, Kovalev only made the most he ever made was two, three, four million in his career. We double that up, that'd be good enough. No, it ain't good enough. All right, had this been a 175 pound fight with no rehydration clause and stipulations on there. Maybe Kovalev would say, you know what, I'll take the eight-figure offer. And what Earl Spence tell Canelo and them? I never, never take the first offer. And for Kovalev, he right. Never take the first offer. You need to come. I'm, I'm at least, I'm at least what Danny Jacobs was. I'm at least a 12-5 dude. And then on top of that, with the stipulations, hey, I'm gonna need to be, I'm gonna need about three and a half extra. So I don't need 15-5, and I don't blame Kobe. I'm like, I don't need no Canelo. Because if Canelo want to move up to 75, who else he going to fight? He not going to fight Gosvick because he mobile, right? He ain't going to fight Gosvick, and he ain't got the name Kovalev guy. He ain't going to fight Beevil. Beevil don't bring the cachet Kovalev guy. And plus, Beevil got good movement, and Beevil can, can still be young enough to still be functional at a catchweight and a rehydration clause. He ain't calling out Baturbia. Because Baturbia ain't got no bug. And that and that risk is not worth the reward. You feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, they can love all Kovalev all they want to. Kovalev, I'm like, I'll fight, I'll fight Anthony Yard for a hometown fight. And I'm going to get paid by some investors. But you want me to stop my hometown fight and take a low ball offer? Y'all got y'all throwing all this money around. Y'all giving Triple G, who ain't done what I done done in my career, y'all giving him $20 million, $15 million, to fight a bum. What would y'all offer Triple G to fight Canelo? But you want to offer me a guy who hold a title and you want me to come down and wait. You feel me? And you want your boy to come down and wait. And you want to do a rehydration clause? Like, look here, okay. I'll take the six or seven, eight million, whatever y'all offering. But take the, take the shackles off. Take the shackles off me. Because I'm going to whoop his ass if I ain't got to do a rehydration clause off, off rip. I'm going to beat his ass. I'm going to beat his monkey ass. But you know what? Canelo, Canelo can worry about fighting Callum Smith in the UK. He can worry about Demetrius Andrade, Triple G, Boo Boo Cedars. I don't really want him to fight Triple G. You know? That's what they want. Canelo want to wait, make Triple G wait. You know? But, I mean, they want to lowball Kovalev, go ahead. Kovalev ain't that stupid not to take it. To take it. Show me at least 10 mil. You know? You, the zone throwing all that money. They throwing all that money. But now y'all want to be frugal. But one of the reasons the zone to be frugal is because they don't want the Kovalev fight. That's what it boils down to. They don't want Kovalev. They want that Triple G fight. But then again, how you going to force Canelo to fight Triple G when you can't even force Triple G to fight Demetrius Andrade where before Canelo got upgraded to honorary champion, which is the franchise champion and lost his belt. Y'all could have made that undisputed. Triple G should have fought Boo Boo and Canelo should have got an exception from the WBC and fought Canelo September 13th for undisputed. Now, I don't know how many Mexican fighters have ever had all four belts and been undisputed under these new rules. See, you only used to need three. See, I don't know how many, how many, how many of them dudes actually done that. So, 
So, you know, at the end of the day, that, that'll be you. But then again, you can tell me, hey, CJ, why uh, why Canelo just don't go fight Boo Boo? You know? But then again, you got to remember, they want that trilogy to be for something. If that trilogy ain't for Undisputed, it really don't move the needle. It don't. It don't move the needle. To be cool, to be to keep it 100, and I done went the wrong way to the crib. I forgot it's rush hour. But it really don't move the needle. You know? It don't. But it is what it is. It is what it is. But them low ball and cover left. Come on, man. We better than that, Oscar, right? We better than that to zone. But the zone, like, man, I ain't dishing out that money to him. This ain't the fight we want. You know, they can't force Triple G to do nothing. They can't force Canelo to do nothing. Demetrius Andrade, another example. He on the right side of the street. Like Earl and Ter like excuse me, Earl, Keith, Sean, and Danny. But you on the right side of the street, but you can't get those, those fights you want in enough time. You know, and that's the sad thing about it. You can't get those fights in a timely manner. Earl had to wait two years. You feel what I'm saying? He had to wait two years to get some of them fights. Two years. Demetrius Andrade, he been over there. with this his second year being over there? Calendar year? October be one year. Or one full year. But he been over there since last year. And you still going to have to fight somebody else? Now, I don't know what Demetrius Andrade said at this press conference. I didn't. I wasn't able to watch um, the film after that. I had other stuff I had to do. I had to feed them damn dogs. But... But um, but I, I I don't know what he said or what Charlo said, but you know what? I can count on my YouTube niggas, you know, the Cali Enigma. I can count on Town, World Breaker, all oh, the Marlo's Corner. I can count on all them niggas to let me know if they said something, and ain't neither one of them call each other out, not with no authority, Jamal or Andrade. Neither one of them called each other out. But then again, you know what? Boxing has a way of not making black and black fighters. Floyd was never for, other than Shabra Mitchell, hope I say his name right, Chop Chop, Shane Mosey, and maybe and Zab Judah, maybe a few others, I forgot, Emmanuel Augusta. But Floyd wasn't going on his way to fight brothers. And if, if Floyd set the example for this generation, see Muhammad Ali, Sonny Liston, George Foreman, Shavers, Leon Spinks, Joe Fred, you name them. Ali fought brothers. Sugar Ray Leonard. He fought Al Heyman, brother, Bobby Heyman. Tommy Hearns. Marvin Hagler. Tommy Hearns a few times, a couple times. You know? But you know what? It's kind of like, it's like black people being conditioned right now not to, not to bind together and come together. That's what it is. Boxing is conditioned for black for, for black and black fights not to matter. Now, you got the other side of the panel when people say, oh, why well, we got to fight each other? But if it's a black versus Mexican, a Mexican versus Mexican, or a Mexican versus Puerto Rican, or something like that, boxing finds its way to make shit like that happen. You know? It does. Boxing finds a way to make stuff like that happen. But when it's a brother and a brother, and that's why I'm so adamant, uh, adamant about Errol Spence and, Flo and, and, and Terrence Crawford fighting. Why we can't have never, never had nothing in boxing on, on that type of pay-per-view scale? Ali used to give it to us. Leonard used to give it to us. Mike was knocking out anybody in his prime, and then when his past his prime. He still fought Lennox. He still fought Holyfield. He a little bit past his prime as well. All right. But you know Still fought them guys. But on this level, in this age, why we can't have nothing? And I don't know how to venture off to something else. But all the black fighters tradition, all oh, I want Canelo, I want the cash cow. Hey man, if we if we fight each other, and I don't mean to like to the bone Chris, but if we fight each other, we make ourselves high. We are already the most dominant athletes in the sport. You know, we fight each other. We we was popping in the sport. You feel me? 
You know, Boo Boo and Jamal Charlo. That's we all gonna come out there. All the brothers are gonna support that. Earl and uh, Earl and Bud. We all gonna support that. You know, whatever, whatever it may be. If, if Brian Jennings never, uh, never lost and still was was relevant, him and Wilder had a nice little build up back in the day. For those who didn't follow boxing like that, but hey, it is what it is, man. Goodfella Sports TV. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You reach out to the email if you have a business question, quality response, your video request. Don't forget to check out our, our sponsor, the Help Blaze, the Blaze.com. 100% all natural products. Use the promo code Goodfella1Box to get 18% off. One time for the one time we gone.